I'm Jeff Nimnick. And I'm Rick Paulette. And we're the hosts of The Last Stand. Coyote hunting is my passion. And coyote calls are my livelihood. And together we aim to bring you the best predator hunting tips, tricks, and tactics right down to The Last Stand. The Last Stand, presented by Lucky Duck Predator Calls. We are the masters of deception. Swagger bipods. Shoot with confidence. Shoot with swagger. On X Hunt. Know where you stand. Hornady. Accurate. Deadly. Dependable. Day two in Idaho. Got a new crew member today. Craig had to go back and home to work, so Seth Simpson showed up for today. Still got Rusty around, so he's getting pretty antsy. He's already in there, timed perfect. Had about a 30 minute drive from the hotel this morning. Got just a big, wide open stand. The wind's gonna be a lot better today, so obviously our expectations are a little higher when you know the wind forecast is gonna be a little lower, so I'm gonna slip in here and see what we can get. You know, Rusty kills as many coyotes as anybody out there, and, and part of this show is, is showing you guys different techniques, not just what I always do or not just what Rick always does, um, but to showcase some of that. So after making about eight dry stands to start the morning, I decided it was time to pass the baton. So uh, I passed the remote to Rusty, and he fired up his revolt, and he got to call him. should just be laying around up in some of this thick stuff. This is one of the thicker pastures we've been in today. We found us a nice little bowl where we got just a touch of elevation. We can hopefully catch coyotes streaking through this. You know, in any situation, you know, middle part of the day, I'm always looking for cover. Rocks, canyons, cuts, tree lines, whatever it may be. And when Rusty and Seth were kind of managing things on Onyx Maps, uh, they were looking for areas like that, using the satellite images and trying to figure out where the thicker bunches of sagebrush were. And they found a, a pretty dang good spot. It was about a half section, maybe 300 and some acres of tall grass and, and sagebrush stripped right in between four different fields. And lo and behold, there was a coyote laid up in there. Never fails, man. See, I've been asking, I've been asking Rusty to take us to the good stuff all morning, and then finally I realized, you know, if he's gonna fix the good stuff, I gotta let him call. Sure enough, I played this game a little bit. No dummy.
Nice, good shot, Seth. Had a baby. Using a squeaky, squeaky little sound here. Oh, big, big meat rabbit, big meat rabbit. It's one of Rick's new ones. But uh, yeah, I mean that coyote just worked his way right in. Wasn't on a dead run. Normally the those are the coyotes we shot. Why didn't you let him come lick the call a little bit? I was second guessing myself. I might have missed. <laughs> You know, this particular coyote was the was ruling the roost for sure. He ended up being a 40-pound coyote, which which is big. We shoot lots and lots of coyotes, and you don't kill very many more, you know, that are bigger than 40 pounds. So, you know, you did it right when you when you trick a big old male dog like that. Nice, 40-pounder, <laughs> first 40-pounder of the year. I've been eating good all summer. So we're covering ground, traveling down two tracks, we're traveling down county roads, and uh, all of a sudden, I hear Rusty and Seth making a bunch of commotion beside me, and they're trying to bail out of the door, and I don't really know what's going on, but all of a sudden I hear the word badger. Now Seth has told me stories about him catching these badgers by hand and I'd seen a few videos that he's had before so I knew he could do it but I'd never seen it in person. But uh, once he took off sprinting up that hill after that thing I knew it was a matter of time before he was going to run it down. It looked like Forrest Gump going up through the sagebrush tracking this badger down. Well, we're back on a streak of dry stands. Ever since we killed those last two back to back, we made six other blank stands. It just seems like today that for whatever reason, the coyotes are just not wanting to come travel very far to the call. I mean, everything we've killed today has been within probably, you know, three, 400 yards when we started the call. We've seen probably four or five other coyotes that just sat out there, you know, four or five six seven hundred yards and just looked at us and turn around and walk back into the sagebrush or into the grass you know so on days like that just for whatever reason just the way it is so we've been really specifically trying to find thicker cover where these coyotes are laid up and it's really just a big guessing game of you know where these coyotes are going to be laid up and where you can get close enough to them but on this the stand we have a big thick sage draw going up that way and like i said we're hoping that one's just right up around the corner here, three or 400 yards. They will get lucky and one will be off to the right, but all you can do is keep grinding out the stands. You know, unfortunately, coyote hunting's not always glamorous and uh, action-packed. You know, a lot of times we gotta work for the few coyotes we get. And, you know, the first day was like that. Uh, we'd made 19 stands and we only called in coyotes on two of them. Probably walked, I think, uh, um, Seth looked on his little app thing and we walked over 12, almost 13 miles. So it's in and out all day long, but that's really all you can do. You can cover ground, um, and hopefully just uh, find fresh ears every time you sit down. So 
So going into the last day of the trip, we only have a morning to hunt before people have to scatter back to their own parts of the world. By now, after hunting for two days in Idaho, we kind of have an, a decent idea of what these coyotes are doing, um, what they're responding to, and that's a game plan. We're gonna find cover close to this ag and uh, you know see if we can get in with a coyote laid up in there. you know five six seven mile an hour wind but for whatever reason the coyotes just weren't cooperating a whole lot so it's supposed to be about twice as windy today maybe 10 to 15 hopefully that's got them maybe moving a little bit more kind of hunting the same general landscape we've been in the last couple days lots of agriculture mixed in with these pockets of sagebrush and pasture country so this first stand of the morning I'm gonna start off a few lone howls high-pitched kind of female howls and then I'm gonna go in them you know some, some high-pitched squeaky sounds baby cottontail demise lucky pecker you know high-pitched prey distress sounds like that seem to be what they've been liking the most so and then I'm still gonna work some some of the pup distress stuff second half of the stand maybe we'll we'll trigger a response there Just like every stand on this trip where we called in a coyote, things happen fast within the first minute or so. And this stand was no different. I started off with a sound called lip squeaks and almost instantly Rusty spots the coyote coming off the far ridge. I didn't see the coyote until it came across the flat out about 200 yards, but instantly the coyote's almost running parallel to us. And just at that point, just from seeing the coyote for just a split second, you can tell that the coyote's going for wind. He's not coming straight to the call. Woo! was circling downwind. Luckily he stopped right there before he got says wind. Give me a good shot. At that point you just have to make a split second decision on where you think that coyote's going to end up and I made a move with my gun and I caught a flash of him coming through the sagebrush and I kind of anticipated and got my gun moved into the gap um, where I thought he was going to come out in and sure enough he, he came around the corner. Luckily he wasn't on too fast of a run and I was able to get him to stop at about 100 yards and uh, we had our first coyote of the morning. stand of the trip we've made some phenomenal stands over the last two and a half days been seeing lots of coyotes they're just not wanting to wanting to come to the call you know which sometimes that's the case but rusty got us here in another awesome spot lots of sage lots of thick spots middle part of the day the wind's blowing there should be some coyotes laid up out here so 
I'm gonna stick with a few coyotes we have called in. It's been on the squeaky sounds. Baby Cottontail, the lip squeaks, Lucky Pecker. So I'm gonna give that a go and uh, see if we pull out a little last stand magic here. Some days the coyotes just have your number, man. You know, on this trip to Idaho, um, I would say it's it was a grind. You know, we made well over 50 stands in two and a half days. We covered lots and lots of ground. We saw lots of coyotes. Um, a lot of them didn't respond, but you know, between you know some bonus coyotes and the ones we killed on stand, we were able to put 11 in the truck, which uh, is a good trip. And uh, I can't thank Rusty enough and Seth and, and everybody else for having me out and lining up. It's not easy. To, to put together something like this and, and you know having enough access and ground for 50 stands is a lot and it takes a lot of ground to make that that many stands and hunt that long so uh, appreciate them having me out I had a blast um, it's not always the coyote hunting uh, that's fun you know you spend a lot of windshield time with everybody and telling stories and jokes and and everything like that's uh, half the fun most of the time so uh, thanks again to Rusty for having me out to Idaho it's been a great trip You know, the great thing about this being a YouTube series is you guys can leave comments, ask questions. Um, myself and Rick get on there from time to time and, and hopefully we can answer your questions. Hopefully you guys are picking up lots of tips and tactics throughout this filming series. Um, if you're looking for more information, um, I'm actually starting a podcast called Eastman's Predator Pros. You can find it on Spotify, iTunes, Google Play. Um, check that out. You know, we'll, we're going to go into a lot more in-depth talking on this particular hunt, on other hunts we're doing throughout the season. Um, and just lots and lots of, of coyote hunting tips and tactics. So, so if you're into the podcast uh, and you want to listen to one on coyote hunting, check out the Eastman's Predator Pros podcast.